At Sheffield Metals and the Metal Roofing Channel, we're always going to promote using a professional installation contractor when it comes to installing your metal roof. However, we do realize that there is the do-it-yourself community out there that is looking at taking on the challenge themselves. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the challenges you might face along the way if you do decide to do it yourself. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. Welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett. We get questions constantly from homeowners. Can I DIY a standing seam metal roof myself? Can I install it myself? And that's the question we're gonna answer today. And to help me out, I've got one of Sheffield Metal's installation experts, technical experts, Jeff Hawk to help me out. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for having me, Thad. Yeah, you bet. So we're talking DIY. We get it all the time. Homeowners want to know, can I just buy the panels? Can I buy the accessories? And can I put the roof on myself? There's videos on YouTube. We've got installation videos here on the Metal Roofing Channel. So they want to know, can I do it myself? So, you know, what's your initial thought when you hear that, when someone says, hey, can I DIY my standing seam metal roof? Yeah, my initial thought is it depends. <laughs> Right. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors to take into account. Right. You know, let's let's start off with an easy one. You know, what kind of shape am I in? I mean, you know, just being honest. Right. I got a, got a low slope roof. I got a steep slope roof. How comfortable I am walking around on those roofs. You know, do I have the physical capacity to go up and spend six, eight hours a day in the sun? Am I by myself? Do I have somebody helping me? What kind of shape are they in? You know, I mean, so just from a physical standpoint, keeping yourself safe, something that I would look at first before I would even probably think about anything else. If you do, and you know, you're in good shape and you're ready to take on that challenge, then, you know, there's a couple other things that you're gonna wanna consider. You know, what type of building am I working on? Is my roof a pretty straightforward design up and over? Are there a lot of challenges as far as the design goes? You know, uh, dormers, overhangs, is my roof a cut up nightmare or is it pretty straightforward and I'm gonna be able to do, you know, panel runs and, and knock it down maybe a few penetrations. What panel system do I, am I gonna use? You know, ag panels are typically, you know, the DIY friendly type of installation. But if you're wanting that standing seam look, you know, snap lock is probably a lot more labor friendly than a mechanical seam is. But depending on your building design, is your slope going to allow for a snap lock to be used? The time consideration. Metal roofs don't go on fast when you have an experienced crew, depending on how many people you have, you know, your non-experienced people and the uh, smaller crew size. Do you have the time to devote to, you know, starting and finishing the job? Most people have jobs that they go to work every day. This isn't usually something you come home and work on for an hour after work, you know, get any type of progress done in the time frame you're looking for. So lots of different things to consider when you're thinking about taking on a roofing project on your own. So if I'm watching a YouTube video on how to install standing seam metal roofing, you know, I might see a how to install a panel with clips and I screw down a clip every so far. I look at that and I say, hey, I can do that. That looks like something I can do. But without a doubt. Yeah. What? Pan <laughs> panels pre-cut, panels pre-hemmed. Uh, everything's already been measured out for exactly where it goes. Uh, there's no obstructions in the way, Sim simple. Yeah, so let's talk about what are the actual skills involved behind making that happen beyond just what I'm seeing on video. Without having somebody with the experience of installing it on site, you have to do everything from the beginning before you even start. You know, if you put your first panel on wrong and you throw everything out of modulation, you'll notice it 20 panels deep. And then you have a real problem. Now that you have to go and you have to take up everything you just did, fix underlayment. If it's a re-roof, are you gonna tear the roof off? Are you gonna hire somebody to tear it off, dry it in? All these different steps. And you have to lay out every step in your plan before I would ever start the first step. First step is to create the plan. Second step doesn't even come into play until that's all done, reviewed, maybe talk to it with some people who are experienced, you know, some resources that you may have, have somebody look it over if you forget anything. You don't know what you don't know until you don't, until you find out, right? 
You know, you, you get into it, you're using the wrong clip, you're using the wrong fastener, you have to pull your own permits, is what I'm installing meeting code for my area. There's a lot of different things that go into it other than just, you know, slapping a panel down, throwing a clip on and firing off some screws. You know, there's, there's a lot of pre-planning that needs to take place and that will be the difference between a successful DIY project or not. I think another thing that people should consider heavily is the safety aspect. Can you talk to me about that a little bit? Anytime you're working at height, especially on a sloped roof, depending on what weather conditions you have, safety is an absolute must, right? You're supposed to be tied off. Anytime, anytime you're working at height, doesn't matter if it's 212 or 1012, you should be tied off and you, you're gonna be responsible for having that equipment, learning how to use that equipment so it actually does keep you safe, understanding the potential safety concerns that you will have while installing a roof. It's not just metal sharp, wear gloves. It's not as simple as that. It's, I'm wearing a harness, my, I'm 20 feet off the ground. This thing is holding on to me. I got a 50 foot lifeline. I'm just gonna run it all the way out. You got 50 feet of rope and 20 feet to the ground, you're gonna bounce a couple times before the rope gets taut, right? All these things you have to consider. And then, you know, the metal itself, it's sharp. If it's summertime, you gotta worry about the external environments, whether it be the heat or the cold, depending on the conditions you're, you're uh, installing in. Roofs are slippery, especially first thing in the mornings when you have any type of condensation or moisture on it. The right type of shoes to wear, long pants, you know, all, all that stuff that you have to keep in mind when it comes to the PPE and keeping yourself safe on the job and everybody that's working with you. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot to consider on the safety aspect of things. How are you going to get the panels onto the roof? How are you going to get the panels onto the roof safely and not damage them? All these things to consider, it's like... You can't start installing panels until you get the panels on the roof. You can't get the panels on the roof until you figure out where the panels are gonna be delivered. Where are you gonna stage your panels? These are all the things that lead up to the steps that you have to have a plan for before you get started. Especially with staging and things like that because this project is probably gonna take a lot longer than a, a professional installer would take. They might be out there longer. You don't wanna to have to be moving things a hundred times. Proper planning is definitely important. Yeah, and part of that planning is material estimation, right? You're gonna have to know how many panels you need. You're gonna have to know what trim you need and how much of that. You're gonna have to know how many screws, clips, and then you're gonna have to think about the waste factor. I'm not an experienced installer. How many times am I gonna cut a panel too far and have to go cut another one? And it depends on how comfortable you are with just even types of construction in general. I mean, there's, there's people out there that ne have never had to read a tape measure before right it's like well i need 35 foot panels it's like no you need 35 foot six and seven eighths inch panels and then you have to leave an inch to box it at the top you need an inch for the hem i didn't account for that now all my panels are two inches short you know that might not be a big deal two inches but they're eight ten inches short obviously problems are gonna gonna start to happen yeah um when you talk about material it's uh you know do i have enough extra material I won't even say to mess up, to learn on, especially when it comes to things like seaming, right? At, at 180 degree seam, use an electronic uh, robotic seamer. You don't want your first time seaming a panel to be the first panel on your roof, right? You wanna, you wanna do a couple test runs and be able to make sure that you're comfortable doing it because you can do a roof absolutely perfect and if you mess up the seaming process, well, none of it matters anymore because yeah. your seams are correct. Yep. Now, now that you mentioned seamers, that brings up a topic in my mind is tools, right? There's, when it comes to standing seam metal roofing, there's a list of specific types of tools that not every homeowner, most homeowners are not gonna have. Well, you just talked about the safety aspect, the harnesses, the lifelines, the anchor points. You're a couple hundred bucks in minimum for the first person on the roof, let alone anybody you got helping you. Then you have all the tools, ladders, if you need an extension ladder, you're four or five hundred bucks just for a ladder. The screw guns, the snips, drills, you know, all the different things that come into play. You're probably going to want to get a tool belt if you don't have one already. Yeah. Bending tools, um, cutting tools, all that stuff. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you're going to you're going to make a, a initial investment just to just to even give it a shot. It depends on what your comfort level is and 
You know, if you've never done any type of construction before or, or even any type of handyman stuff, I don't know if I'd recommend, you know, your first go of it being installing your metal roof. But again, you know, homeowners have taken on the challenge and rose to the occasion without a doubt, even with double lock applications where they've rented the seamer and they've made it happen. It just depends on what your comfort level is and how much time you have to devote to that pre-planning stage because that can't stress it enough that that is probably the most important out of all of it. And then obviously the time that you're going to have to commit to being able to put this roof on yourself because it is not going to be a fast process and you will not get it done as fast as a experienced crew with eight people on it that do it all day, every day, you know, in and out. It is what it is. All right, I think this is a great stopping point. Um, thank you, Jeff, for your time. Next video, let's talk about those pros and cons. If you actually complete the roof install, what that looks like for you going forward. So if you've got any questions, comment down below, stick around for part two, subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.